You've seen my chassis of Russell running. I gave a little demonstration of that not so long ago. Now I'm just going to discuss the boiler I'm going to put on it. This is the um, outer shell of the boiler. It's been partly made up. This is the firebox end of it. This is the main barrel. It's just a piece of um, plumber's tubing, just over two inches diameter. Nice big firebox. So after a lot of debating, I decided that I would build a, um, a coal-fired boiler rather than the normal boilers I build, which are gas-fired. So to build a coal-fired boiler takes some doing. I've not built one in this scale before. Um, this is the inner firebox. That fits in there like that. You can see there's a water jacket. There's a water jacket all the way around here. There's a water space at the top. Drill the holes for the various outlets for steam and inlets for steam there. I'm going to start assembling the interior part of the boiler. So this is the um, rare tube plate. Now, I've already flanged these, I won't go through that. These are the rare tube plate. I'm going to fit together now. This is one, this is one thirty-second thick copper sheet which has been formed into the shape. This is one sixteenth copper sheet which is the outer shell. Uh, the boiler only runs at um, 40 pounds per square inch, tested, I'll test it to, hydraulically to 80 pounds per square inch. But first off, I'm going to put the rivets in. And this is a little bit of a fiddly job. I've now riveted the firebox tube plate onto the firebox in a wrapper. This is the piece that sits inside the firebox and is surrounded by water. So, uh, one of the great things is, is as you, you've got to get a fairly close joint here, but the copper is so soft that you can just give it a, a light tap and it will bring it into contact with the flange. On these. You, you can see the flange on the inside here with these little rivets. I probably put too many rivets in here, didn't need to. But what I'm going to do now is, these are the fire tubes and these are made out of um, copper tubing which uh, they use for refrigerators. You can buy it at a plumbing store. I'm going to just press these in here. No particular order, they've all been cut to length, which is cool. What I'm going to do is, before I get this deep in there, it's, a, it's not a tight fit, but it's got to be a decent fit. Is You see I've got a, um, a black marker mark on there, and uh, the acid doesn't seem to get rid of that too easily, so I'm just going to rub it off. Just going to help it a little bit, a little bit of uh, emery paper to get rid of that black mark. It's been in the acid, but it's not got rid of that black mark. It might affect the uh, silver soldering. Silver soldering likes a pretty clean joint. It'll go into the acid again because that that end is actually going to be the front tube plate end. So this is into the firebox end. Now there they all are. New. I'm going to tilt the camera up a little bit so you can see the top of it. There you can see the whole length of it. My bench behind. Now, just as a guide, I'm not going to solder this on just yet. I'm going to put the front tube plate on just to keep all the tubes in alignment with it. This is a, this can be a little bit fiddly because they all try and want to go in at the same time. Although they're, individually they're not tight in their holes. Um, when you put them in as a group, there's, there's five tubes here, when you put them in as a group they all start fighting each other and fighting you just for fun. That's my um, central heating boiler draining in the background there, it's not my stomach. Oh, come on. Right, I've uh, pushed the tubes into the um, firebox tube plate and the front tube plate. You see the front tube plate, I haven't, I've only just recently, haven't recently I should say, uh, acid dipped it because I don't want, I'm not going to braise that up yet. I'm going to just be brazing here around all these tubes around this joint. You don't want too many, you don't want too much of the tube sticking out. You want just enough to make it reasonable. You want to try and get all the tubes um, the same distance through the tube plate, but you don't need too much jutting forward there. The other thing you need to think about, or I need to think about, is uh, the way it fits into the boiler. So it fits into the boiler, it's all inside this boiler, this way. But it actually, the tube, you always want the tubes to be running upwards slightly towards the front, which is the front here. You want them to be 
running up slightly so that the uh, it apparently gives it better um, flow for the hot gases coming up out of the firebox here. So I'm just going to measure that up against the boiler so I get the right tilt up. It's only going to be approximate because I can't actually fit it into the boiler at this stage. Anyway, I'm going to do that before I uh, braise all of this joint together. What I'm doing now is I'm just pre-fluxing the joints here with a mixture of flux and water. Now, I've been told that it's very unprofessional to pre-flux the joints, but I uh, usually just dip the um, silver solder into the, uh, the flux as you go along. But I feel on a job that's going to take a few minutes to get right, as this is going to do, uh, under the heat. I prefer that the fact that there's, all, there's already flux there going into the joint, already there available to go into the joint, keep it clean. Because uh, using propane as a heating source, which I do, um, propane's pretty dirty. This is going to go black very quickly as it carbonates, as the gas um, exhaust carbonates around the, um, uh, the metal and that's what makes it go off. Acetylene, if I had it, would be probably a better bet, but I don't have it. And uh, acetylene's a little bit more problematical because you may melt the copper if you're not careful. Uh, if you just concentrate the heat, you can actually melt the copper. I've done it myself on other jobs, when I've been using someone else's um, acetylene, oxycetylene equipment. And um, this is fairly thin copper. I hate to do it when you've spent so much time prepping it. I'd hate to um, blow a hole through the copper in the um, just on the point of where you're putting it all together. Be rather depressing. Okay, just finishing off these the rivet heads. I'll have to put solder over all these rivet heads. I've uh, got lots of lots of. Um, um, flux around there, and then I'm going to do the inside. Uh, but you can probably see it there quite clearly inside that joint there. I'm going to flow the solder into there as well. I say solder, it's silver solder, so it melts at around about uh, six or seven hundred degrees C, which is way, way above anything this boiler will get up to. Um, you know, it's going to, this boiler is only running at 40 pounds, so the solder, there's no chance of solder melting, even if, you shouldn't do, but even if you get a, you know, a low water level in the boiler, it won't damage the soldered joints, the boiler won't collapse on you. Okay, that's done. Okay, that's the job, silver soldered. I think I've got good penetration, it looks pretty good from here. Uh, this is before I've cleaned it up again in the acid. You can see I've put plenty of silver solder on all around all the joints, around the rivet heads, around the tubes, and I did it all from this side, and it's penetrated into the seam. Oh, let's get a bit of light on there. Into the seam and the around each of those tubes. So that looks pretty good. Let's go and dump it in the acid.